So now um, we're, I'm going to have a conversation with uh, another brand, um, not a French one, this one, uh, not, a, not, a, not a food one, but uh, it will be Oakley, uh, with Scott Alexander, who is the director of digital brand marketing at Oakley. Help me welcome um, Alexander. Okay, so tell, tell us more about a famous brand that you have on your, on your head, um, but yeah, <laughs> I've seen it. Um, not too sunny out either. No, so. it's fine. Um, let remind us a, a little bit, I'm not sure all of them know you, so um, how old is Oakley and what you're doing at Oakley? Sure, so uh, Oakley is a sports performance eyewear brand and a sports apparel brand as well. Um, so we are making glasses such as these that are kind of more for your lifestyle customer, but then we're also making glasses for performance cycling, for mountain biking. Uh, we make ski goggles, snow goggles, and, uh, and a full line of apparel as well. Um, and, so, and you, you joined, you joined OK in what, last year or yeah, so? I'm, I'm relatively new there, so just about a year and a half in right now. Um, I was at Red Bull previous to that, where we did quite a bit of brand building. And so we're taking some of those practices and putting them into place uh, over at Oakley. And so what are the uh, practices that you're taking from, from Red Bull? Sure. Like? And, and I'm not taking all of them from there, but we're developing new ones as well. Um, it's this idea of creating content marketing and consumer-centric marketing. It's the idea that uh, in order to engage and connect with new consumers, we're going to connect with them before they enter the stereotypical sales funnel. So if you've got these people and the first point of connection is when they walk into your store or when they come to your website, now that's not the, the way that people shop anymore. People are researching on you know, Google, people are looking at reviews on other websites. And so you have to go out into the, the ethos of the internet and, and find people and make a contact with them before they've come to you. And so we're trying to create content that's, that's amazing or entertaining or educational and then we can get that content to people and we create a relationship with them before they've walked into the store or before they've come to our website to go shopping. So some example of content you, you're creating um, for OK, is it like awesome videos with some, uh, with, with some performers that you have sponsored? Or... Sure, yeah, so, so we work with a lot of really fantastic top-notch athletes. Um, they're uh, a lot of them performance-based or action sports, so um, we have the ability to, to help these guys in something they want to achieve. So we worked with uh, a skateboarder named Bob Bernquist from Brazil, and he has a giant skate ramp in his backyard. Um, it's uh, 65 foot from the takeoff to the landing, and uh, we were taking Bob in a helicopter, and he was jumping out of the helicopter into the ramp and going across the gap and then jumping back up and you know, catching the rung of the helicopter and then base jumping off of that. And <laughs> this is all, of course, this YouTube gold um, because we don't, have to, we don't have to pay to market that. We place that on the internet and the internet is this democratic marketplace where um, people share things that they like. They share things that they think are cool and they share things that they enjoy. And so you can either try to focus on creating different strategies for people to like the stuff that you're already making or you can back up and, and try to create things that people are going to like. Mm. And I think that's a more successful strategy so, so, to get there. The type of content you're describing is also the type of content we can expect from a Red Bull or a GoPro or other brands such as um, so in this specific area. How do you differentiate from them? Sure. So everybody's got different angles in different sports in which they participate in. Um, so where a company like GoPro or Red Bull focuses a lot on action sports and they do a really good job, um, we have some areas in kind of performance sports and endurance sports that those companies I don't think focus in as much. And so that's a different audience for us to talk to and it's also more relevant to our products. Okay. So when, when, when we prepared the session, um, you, you explained me you have a you always pay attention to um, the different kind of distribution strategies you have depending on the kind of content uh, you produce. Um, so explain us a little bit what it means. 
Sure. So creating this type of content, I, I feel, is super fun. Um, and it's, it's a good way to, like I said, make that first introduction with consumers. Now, that doesn't mean that the other types of media and the other types of marketing that you would create aren't important. They certainly are. But you have to make sure that you're picking the right channel to have that conversation in. Uh, so if someone's on our website and they're looking at a pair of glasses, there's a lot of science and technology and research and development that goes into everything that we make. I think we make really good products. I have a biased opinion, I bet. but. <laughs> um, when they're shopping for a product, people want to be educated on a product. They want to learn more. And so instead of trying to romance something, let's tell them about it, right? So, so if you're going to grab someone's attention or you already have their attention, you don't need to do a, a, a dog and pony show. You need to, to tell them about your products and let them make an educated decision. On the other hand, if you're trying to get views on YouTube, if you're trying to get likes on Facebook, don't push things down your consumers' throats. You have to give them something. It, it, they have to take away more from the interaction than you do, and you have to be OK with that in those outlets to be successful. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you see some differences, um, I mean, in, in, among countries in the world? Um, do you have um, different kind of content, depending on where it will be distributed, if, if it's in France, if it's in the US? Um, how do you manage that when, on the internet, a YouTube video is available worldwide. Sure. So you can get clever with geo-targeting and things yeah. like that. But um, I mean, we're, we're talking about doing a, a project um, on cricket. And cricket is something that's relevant in some countries and not relevant in other countries. Formula One is really big in Europe. It doesn't play quite as well in the US. So as you're creating that content, you can kind of pick the channels of distribution based on where you know that content works. And you have to tap into those audiences. Um, the other part that you can, I, I guess I'm talking a little bit more about kind of amazing, incredible videos, but I think one of the things, if you're a smaller company and you don't have access to the budgets and athletes and locations um, that the bigger brands do, you can focus on utility-based marketing. So if you're a company that makes iPad cases, for example, um, you can talk about, you know, the damage threshold of dropping an iPad and, and, and give people information that they're looking for, um, you know, tips to protect your iPad or something like that. And that's information that people might be looking for. And you simply put that out on the internet and let people come to you to get that. OK. So on, on, on this content um, strategy on, on, on the internet, what's, what's your vision for the next, not the next 10 years, but like two to five years, what, what are the areas you want to explore and what do you find interesting for this specific kind of um, internet marketing? Yeah, I think it, the last five years as you go to conferences like Lueb, I think a lot of companies are talking about social and social marketing. And I think as they're getting into this space, they're starting to learn that uh, you have to create things that are interesting to be successful here. And if you guys went to uh, Gary's speech, uh, he's a lot more energetic than I am, but he basically says, you know, be, be interesting and be relevant, create things that are fun, create a conversation, and uh, I, th I think a lot of brands are going to learn how important that is to be successful there, and they're going to start to create things for consumers. It's a fantastic time to be a consumer right now, because we get tons of free information, free entertainment, and all we have to do is form a relationship with those brands, or not, if it doesn't make sense for us. But it, you know, the, the idea of someone creating media and then trying to sell advertising against it is a model that's finding more and more problems to secure itself a space in the marketplace. And for brands like GoPro or Red Bull or Oakley, um, companies that are creating content to inform or to entertain, they want the relationship with consumers. And that's a different market with the same outcome, which is, which is engaging with a consumer over media. So it, it's a little bit linked to your point that um, you see in the future what you, what you called a democ democratization of industries and the fact that this new kind of, you call it, I'm quoting you, social collective vision for a brand. Um, so what does, what does that exactly mean? Sure. So we, we're going into a space, or I guess we're already kind of there. Um, we're in a place now where consumers own a brand more than the brand owns itself. And what I mean by that is, is if you run a coffee shop, for example, and you want to tell everybody how great your coffee is, you used to be able to put that in magazines and newspapers and put it on the radio, and people couldn't 
get a word in edgewise. You kind of told everyone how it was, and they had to listen. And now your share of voice within the conversation around your coffee shop is not trustworthy and not nearly as loud as the voice that consumers have. So if you make a shitty cup of coffee, it doesn't matter what kind of marketing that you do around that. You're going to get torn apart on Yelp. The best thing that you can do to get people to speak highly of your coffee shop is to make a really good cup of coffee. And that's, for consumers, that's fantastic. It, it, it's making companies, uh, it's forcing companies to be honest, okay. which is great. To, to, to continue on, on, on the future, um, and I, I was tempted to start with this, but um, now we, we can talk about it. it I mean, when we hear in this tech world, when we hear glasses, we automatically think Google Glasses. So you have a business, old business, where you sell glasses. So when will you have connected glasses? Um, to, will you do kind of a joint venture uh, with Google so that all this um, awful Google Glasses uh, have some style coming from Oakley? How do you see the future for, for this specific uh, industry of glasses? I have no announcements to make today. <laughs> no. So um, these, these so, are not connected, right? So, yeah, no, these, okay. these, no. Um, so we, we do have one connected product that's available now. Um, we have the Oakley Airwave Snow Goggle, which actually has an LCD screen. And, and uh, it, we partnered with Recon Technologies to, to create um, this platform and enhance the software. And you have an app in your pocket. You can see how fast you're going. You can look up the trail map. You can actually get text messages into your snow goggles. Um, the screen is out of the way. It won't distract you. But uh, So we have some connected products um, that, we're, that we're doing now. As far as what the future holds, we have a fantastic product team that's making decisions uh, in that regard. But I, I think connected products aren't going anywhere. They're, they're, there's going to be more and more things that we're wearing that are connected to our phones, are connected directly to, to the net. And, and as we think about innovating products, we're a company based on innovation and coming out with new products and new designs. Um, you know, I, I think it's something that we have to keep in, we have to keep our eyes on. Okay. And it's also linked to the culture you want to have at Oakley, where you, you want to. Uh, what, what you told me is that you want to be more like a startup uh, in, in how you want to be agile, uh, because we think startups are the ones that win the game and. Um, that's a culture you want to bring to, or is it already a culture you're having at Oakley? Yeah, I, I think as we look at the market, I mean, if you went to CES last year in, in Las Vegas, um, there was this huge showroom with these companies that spent millions of dollars building these display booths, and all of the press was over in the place that was funded by Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. Like, it was... It was unbelievable. You have these giant corporations, and they're bringing 4K TVs, and just kind of like no one cares because the guy down the aisle has something that you've never heard of. That's exactly what you wanted, because you have a hundred million minds trying to come up with the next best thing, and the math on that just doesn't make sense. If you think your company of a thousand people is going to out innovate a hundred million people, uh, I, I think it's not realistic. So I think companies have to embrace the crowdsourcing nature for innovation that's happening around them in order to stay competitive moving forward. So you think your next big competitor will, won't be a one you already know, it will come for a Kickstarter campaign? It might be, this is something you, you, you fear a little bit? Um, I, I don't know in terms of, um, in terms of eyewear, but I, I think in terms of, when we think about connected devices, I think that's a space that moves pretty quickly there. When we talk about eyewear, you know, the things that, that drive that business are, are, you know, superior quality in manufacturing and things like that, and that's not something that really works well on, you know, Kickstarter, you don't start with a facility that's meant to accurately manufacture a million pairs of sunglasses. That's not something that you would put on Kickstarter, but you might come up with a new way um, to, to I don't know, a new product that you wear on your head that uh, does something that the existing product set doesn't do. And I think uh, there will be innovative things. There, I guess there have been innovative things, and there will continue to be innovative things in that space. OK. Um, one minute left. So a quick advice you want to give to uh, startups or a call you want to make to startups if you're looking for innovation and you want to work with startups, because we have quite a few here. So 
Um, it's like you have one minute to, to, to say something about it. Sure. So, yeah, I mean, we're always looking out at what other companies are doing and, um, and trying to get involved whenever possible. So if we can build uh, an application that runs on a platform or we can integrate a sensor or something like that, um, if we can get people out, um, you know, playing, playing outside, competing better in whatever sport or whatever they're passionate about, if we can do that and we don't have the tools to do it on our own and we can find someone else that we can work with and, and build software or whatever piece that we can work with to, to make that better, and then that's something that we'd like to do. But I, I think in terms of startups trying to gain an audience, you know, the, the internet is a busy place. So I think, think about when you put something out on Facebook or you put something out on, on Instagram, um, your competition is not the other products that are in your category. It's, it's your, you know, your audience's family or friends. And yeah. so bring something relevant to the conversation. All right. Thank you for this conclusion. Thank you, Alexander. Thank you.